thousand generations you are worthy of all of all and unto you the slain and risen king will lift your voice with heaven singing worthy of all of all Today is the Feast of Ascension, the day that the Church remembers Jesus' coronation to the throne of the universe. This is what is important for us to remember. Oftentimes, when a Church hears the word Ascension, what we think is, Jesus is now absent. He is up there and we're down here. But that's not true. Because Jesus ascended to his throne, he can now be present at any time and any place. Let's remember that as we celebrate Ascension today. I want to lead us in prayer, asking God to make Jesus' presence real even more in our lives. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, we, your people, praise you, we exalt you, and we bless your holy name. It is your love that is revealed in the life and death of Jesus. It is your power that is seen in his resurrection. And it is your majesty that is made known by his ascension into heaven to be at your side. We thank you that through his ascension, Jesus is now set free to be Lord of all, no longer bound to a particular place or time, but he is with us always, able to reach even to the ends of the earth. We thank you that through his departing, Jesus prepared for his coming again, through his spirit, his church, and his coming again, in glory. Forgive us, Father, for so often we fail to grasp the wonder of ascension. Each day we live as though it had never been. Help us, O God, to always keep your power, your authority, your love, and your majesty in our minds, and to never neglect doing your will. Help us to be obedient to the word you place in our hearts and our minds. Give us a deeper sense of wonder, a stronger faith, and a greater understanding of all you have done. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. All this thing we ask of you in the name of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and forevermore. Amen. On this Ascension Day, uh, the text that the church looks at is Acts 1 to 11, Psalm 93, Ephesians 1 15 to 23, and Luke 24 44 to 53. We're not going to be reading it for this short reflection time, but I invite you to look at it yourself at your free time. Um, what are we to make of the Ascension? Um, Jesus' withdrawal from our sight, his physical absence from earth. What are we to make of that day? Where is Jesus now? Um, 60 years ago, on 12th of April, 1961, the Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first man to enter outer space and orbit the earth. Some sources claim that during this space flight, Gagarin commented, I don't see any God up here. But later sources denied Gagarin actually made that statement and actually attributed to Nikita Khrushchev, who supposedly said Gagarin flew into space but didn't see any God there. <laughs> Regardless of whether it is Gagarin or Khrushchev who said it, the statement points to some assumptions and even to misunderstandings about God and God's relationship to the world. 
Too often we believe and we speak and even live as if God is up there, not down here. Somewhere out there and not within. Too often we are left with the gap between God and humanity, God and creation, spirit and matter, heaven and earth. Now, a quick reading of the Ascension story might leave us looking up toward heaven and attempt to get one last glimpse of Jesus. The difficulty is that we sometimes think of heaven as another place, like other places in our world. The logic that follows this way of thinking is that if Jesus ascends to heaven, then he must go to another place. But rather than looking up, seeking to catch one last glimpse of Jesus, the ascension actually directs us to look within us and to look all around us. Remember, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so this Ascension Day, two things that I want to invite all of us to remember. Two things that we need to remember about the event of the Ascension. First, the Ascension is God the Father's absolute affirmation of His Son. The event of the Ascension is an event when Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified Son of Mary, Son of David, Son of Man, the resurrected Son of God, Lamb of God, Savior of the world is coronated to be the King and the Lord of the universe. That is why the psalm reading for Ascension is Psalm 93. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from old. You are from everlasting. Christ, our King, is coronated, and in His coronation, He, the One from whom all things came into being, through Him and without Him, not one thing came into being, the One who established the whole universe affirms that the universe shall never be moved. And this brings us to the second aspect we need to remember about the Ascension. The Ascension is also God the Father's absolute affirmation of humanity through His Son. It is God the Father's absolute affirmation of humanity through His Son. This came from the mouth of Jesus Himself. In the Gospel of John, before the crucifixion, Jesus already told His disciples, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these. Why? Because I am going to the Father. Because I am going to the Father, you can do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father, my Father affirms you, affirms all of us as His children, and therefore affirms our humanity. That is why the Luke text for this day, Luke 24, 50 to 51, specifically given to us, ends with Jesus continuously blessing the disciples. It says, Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. You see, friends, his blessing did not stop as he was carried up into heaven. His blessing, the disciples, continues from the throne of the universe. His blessing is everlasting. And so the ascension is not about absence. Instead, the ascension is about presence. Jesus has not left us. Rather, from the throne, Jesus Christ has filled us. In the words of a former Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, who said, the ascension of Christ is his liberation from all restrictions of time and space. It does not represent his removal from earth, but his constant presence everywhere on earth. Christ, the King of the universe, now fills 
and sanctifies all time and space. Therefore, the grace of the ascension is that, as Paul says in Colossians 3, verse 11, Christ is all in all. Repeat that with me. Christ is all in all. The unity of humanity and divinity revealed in the incarnation is brought to fullness in the ascension. Jesus' disappearance, if you will, in his ascension, his disappearance beyond the clouds is not to go into some geographical location, but into the heart of all creation where he dwells in his glorified humanity. Quite the opposite of him being far, his ascension beyond the clouds actually makes Jesus the king nearer in space and in time. You see, when Jesus left us to go to his throne in heaven, he did not go far away. Heaven is not far away. Heaven is another dimension of creation that is very close at hand. Very, very close. So very close. Which means he is very close. So very close. And when he comes again, he's not coming from a faraway place. Actually, he doesn't need to move at all. All he needs is to simply pull back the curtain, the shield that separates heaven and earth, and we will see him as he is. Again, this is shown to us in the reading of uh, the book of Acts. The angel said to the disciples, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The ascension reveals that in Christ's humanity, all humanity has been enthroned next to God. Wow. It is our eternalization, if you will. And from that moment on, our homeland is in heaven. Through the ascension, Christ is still present, but in a different way. He is no longer physically in front of his disciples. Instead, he is within them. And so let's get rid of the distortion that has invaded our way of thinking about God, our theology, our understanding of God, the distorted view that sees God, heaven, and holiness as up there somewhere while we're stuck down here. That way of looking at God, heaven, and holiness that makes us spend our time jumping up and down, thinking that if we jump hard enough, if we jump high enough and fast enough, we can somehow touch God. <laughs> we can somehow touch heaven. And we can somehow touch holiness. Which brings us to a way of living our Christian life almost always involving comparison, involving competition, and involving judgment of some kind. We end up comparing ourselves and our lives with other people and their lives. We end up competing with each other, believing that for us to ascend, the other has to descend or at least not jump as high as us. We are forever judging ourselves and one another. We fill our lives with busyness, hoping to climb to new heights. The ascension of Jesus completes the resurrection. The resurrection is victory over death. The ascension lifts humanity up to heaven. Jesus' ascension seats human flesh, your flesh, my flesh, at the right hand of God the Father. And from that moment, we partake of God's glory and we participate in it. And so the question we need to keep in mind is not how do we ascend? That has already been accomplished. The question for us is, what pulls us down? What weighs us down? What do we need to let go of? Fear? Anger? Resentment? Those things often weigh us down. The need to be right or be in control is a heavy burden that pulls us down. The attitude of self-righteousness, jealousy, or pride is our gravity. Many of us will be caught in the chains of perfectionism and the need to prove that we are enough. For others, it may be indifference or apathy. For many, 
lives are tethered by addiction. Gravity takes many forms, and I wonder, what is the gravity that denies you Jesus' ascension? And so this Ascension Day, as we begin to look at our life and identify the places of gravity, let me end by saying, do not despair. Do not despair. Because the very thing that hold us down, the things that hold us down, actually also point the way to ascension. Our participation in Jesus' ascension begins not by looking up, but by looking within. And as we look within, we will see what weighs us down and let them go so that we can participate in Jesus' ascension. Let's pray. Father, thank you that today we can celebrate the coronation of our Lord to the throne of the universe. And thank you that as he always prays for us, right now he is also interceding for us at your right hand. We pray that our hearts will be attuned to what he is interceding on our behalf so that we can let go and put out the things that weigh us down and we can participate in his ascension and experience even a glorified foretaste of ourselves here, right now, until we see him face to face. Do this in the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and may you ascend with Jesus this ascension day and forevermore. God bless. May have thrown upon the praise of sun thousand generations you are worthy Lord of all and unto you the slave and raising king will have